fit a stereotype of the older, doesn't always fit the stereotype of the older adult sex offender and the younger child. Children uh, sexually harass each other, bully each other, and often when they're exploited and vulnerable, they put themselves at risk in various different ways. And we need to, as NGOs working with children, to stay in touch with what they're doing. And, and feed that into policy. So, oh, sorry, that's that's a uh, uh, CEOP. Okay. So, no, you, no, if no. we can speed up, please, we need to get some. So, I, just um, I, last slide. Um, so just, I just wanted to say today about the role of campaigning and influencing and speaking for children and empowering them to speak is critical in constructive work with different stakeholders and it's essential to resolving some of the issues and barriers. So working in partnership with industry, industry have the technical knowledge and the money to develop technical measures as well as the technical understanding, but they also have to be prepared to make the commitment um, to developing products that aren't always and using products that aren't always in their commercial interest. Uh, politicians, national governments and international institutions obviously um, key role in legislation but obviously much more widely in terms of resources and political prioritisation as well as holding them to account in terms of their commitment uh, to children's rights which most governments have uh, made a commitment to other than the US and Somalia. Um, obviously, a micro level advocacy with childcare professionals and workforce and law enforcement on a day to day basis. This is something that the NSPCC does through multi agency working and all the time to provide the voice and experience of children. And I think we have a responsibility to work together with um, other civil society groups. And in taking our experience within CHIS, for example, we don't always agree as NG child rights NGOs. We may have slightly different perspectives, but when we do speak together, we are quite a powerful voice and quite a powerful network in the UK scene and we hope that Inexo can do something similar in providing a unified voice. And finally, uh, the advantages of mobilising civil society and the media we have found to be quite powerful. Thanks. Um, thank you very much, uh, Zoe. And that was uh, very interesting. And uh, you did raise uh, quite a few um, very important points. Um, you know, the fact that uh, fishing sites get thrown out in a few hours and child abuse images stays there much longer is definitely uh, something that needs to be worked out. And um, your campaign was something that, you know, uh, can be done in other countries as well. Maybe they can just um, capture the airport for a few days and see what happens. Um, I'm just kidding because <laughs> and of course, this is not the best approach. Um, well, we ha we are we still have um, probably five minutes um, for a short um, presentation, not really presentation, a dialogue, um, to talk about how th the challenges are you know faced in de developing countries in terms of expanding the network. So I would like to call up uh, Mr. Thiago Tavares from Brazil. Uh, to speak on this uh, very briefly. Yeah. You, you have five minutes. Okay. Well, good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much, Adam. Uh, I would like to just uh, uh, to highlight some uh, progress that we have uh, in South America, especially in my country, Brazil. Uh, and give you some information uh, regarding these progresses in four, the, the four main sectors. Uh, in fact, many things are changing in our country. Uh, on the law enforcement, uh, we have uh, a progress with uh, the great work developed by the Brazilian Federal Police uh, and the work developed by the Brazilian Federal Prosecutor as well. Uh, last December, the Brazilian Federal Police uh, Start in a, in a very uh, in a big operation it was called Operation Carrossel One, that traced uh, more than 3,000 uh, 
different internet users that use peer-to-peer -peer network to distribute child sexual abuse or images. Uh, and two months ago, the Brazilian Federal Police uh, started the, the second phase of this operation. Uh, and uh, with the, the information provided the Brazilian Federal Police, they sp Spain, for example, arrest 121 uh, criminals. Greece arrest 28 uh, criminals. And uh, in Brazil, uh, the Brazilian police uh, arrest just three people, but find more than 121 uh, different users. And why this? Because uh, since two, uh, a couple of weeks ago, the possession, for example, was not a crime in Brazil. What is, uh, what is an absurd possession of child sexual abuse, possession of these images, was not a crime, was not a criminal offense in Brazil. And then uh, the National Congress uh, establishing a special commission on child online protection. And uh, one of the gains was uh, to approve, to pass a new law. In this new law, uh, the, the, the possession and uh, gro grooming, uh, morphing, uh, cell advertising of child sexual abuse and abuse, all of these conducts are now criminal offenses in our country. So uh, we have a, a, a strong uh, uh, progress, a very high, stronger uh, progress uh, on the legislative uh, uh, sector, on the law enforcement, and as well on the private sector. I know that uh, you all heard about uh, with this uh, website. But now, this problem are fixed. And the problem in the Google sign uh, an agreement, in a formal agreement with the Brazilian uh, authorities. Uh, and nowadays, Google uh, are our partner. I would like to, to, to say and clarify this point. Uh, since July, uh, after this agreement uh, signed, Google start to cooperate with the Brazilian law enforcement and start to comply with the Brazilian law and with uh, and comply with uh, uh, the Brazilian court orders. And in the first four months of this uh, agreement, uh, work in partnership with Google we find uh, around 1,500 uh, suspects on the social networking sites. And all these uh, suspects uh, are under investigation by the Brazilian Federal Prosecutor Services and the Brazilian Federal Police as well. And I'm happy to, to uh, stay here exactly with one representative of the Brazilian Federal Prosecutor Service, which is Mr. Sergio Suyama, and with uh, Mr. Carlos uh, Eduardo Sobral, who is the coordinator of the Brazilian uh, Cybercrime Unity at the Brazilian Federal Police. Uh, that's it. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Thiago. Um, I would like to just, you know, maybe you can very quickly uh, explain what allowed, what kind of um, processes allowed the enactment of such law that criminalizes uh, possession. I mean, what pushed the agenda forward? You, you said you didn't have that law before. Yeah. So um, any particular um, effort or initiative uh, was, can you just briefly mention Yes, uh, basically uh, the National Congress uh, established a special commission uh, for investigating the, 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 the use of the internet yeah. to violate uh, children's rights. But that was based on the public lobbying or mass media? I mean, what allowed the commission to be formed in the first place? Basically after the Operation Carousel 1 and 
uh, the initiative of one senator, the Senator Mario de Malta, who proposed this commission for the National Congress, and uh, the public, public and civil society as well was pressured in using the media to, to press uh, the National Congress as well. Thank you very much. And that shows the power of the masses. And um, so uh, we, I want to thank all the panelists here for uh, the presentation, which gave us an array of um, different um, issues to cover with. And uh, now I open the floor for questions. And I guess um, any question that's directed to Larry Majid um, can be handled by either John or one of us here. So the presenters must have made everything very clear. Um, yes, I guess so, yeah. Um, I, if someone has any pressing questions, um, no, no signs of hands. I, I'm sure everybody is entirely fatigued by the end of the day, looking forward to the day tomorrow. But uh, thanks again. Thanks to all the participants here. And uh, we hope that we did manage, the panelists did manage to inform you. And um, let's hope that we can work together at the next IGF. Thank you very much.